chapter 2, section 2.4, Math 110. In the beginning of this section, we are introducing some of the graph that are kind of very common. One is, when you have an equation of a straight line, equation of a straight line, the highest power of x is 1, and graph is always a straight line, like in this case, y equal x. Or you might have equation that doesn't have any x in it, like y equal c or f of x equal c. So example, y equal three. Y equal three, it's a straight line and is a horizontal line. Every point lie on this line has y value of three. Or you might have x equal negative two, x equal a number. That is the vertical line. So you either have a vertical line or a horizontal line. Another popular graph is a parabola, which is y equal x2. So when the degree of x goes beyond one, like two or three, then is a curve, it's not a straight line anymore. So this is one of the graphs that we use very often and then we do the translation on this. Then it would be graph of y equal x3. This is the odd functions because the power of x is odd versus the other one, which is even functions. Even functions, power of x is two. So in that case, if you take any value of x, for instance, x equal three and substitute, the value of y is nine. And for x equal negative three also, this you got the same value of y. That means this type of graph are symmetric with respect to y-axis. And power is even. But the odd functions, the power is three, and they're symmetric with respect to the origin. And then this graph of y equal radical functions. What you have under the radical always has to be zero or greater. Because if you have a negative number under radical, it's undefined. So graph of radical x, this is graph of radical x. And it's just on this piece because x is always positive. Therefore, y is positive. This is in case graph of y equal one over x. This graph exists for any value of x except zero. When you substitute x equal zero, then the y is undefined because one over zero is undefined. So this function has this continuity. It breaks at x equals zero. X equals zero, in fact, is the y-axis. So anytime you have a graph which is the fractions and the denominator has an x in it, then whatever number make the denominator zero are lines that break the graph. They call it asymptotes. All right, and then, and then there is this graph that we discuss later on as how to apply it. In this case, they are saying which one of this is the correct answer. They call it the greatest integer function. As I said, we explain about this later on so you understand how to deal with this type of function. Now, in algebra, when we give you coordinates of two points, when we give you coordinates of two points and ask you to find the equations, what you do is you find the slope from this formula. When you find the slope, then you take the slope at one point and use these equations to find your final equations here. Okay? When they say f of negative five is equal to negative six, that means when x is negative five, y is negative six. Or when they say f of two is five, means when x is two, the value of y is five. So basically we are giving you coordinates of two points. And you have the solution of this already if you have. This problem is very similar. X is one, y is three, x is zero, y equal to nine. Very similar to that one. You could find the slope then write the general equations, take x1, y1, 
take x1, y1, and the slope, and use your, find your equations. You could use these points in order to plot. And remember, equation of linear equations is the graph is a straight line. So you could use these two points to draw the line. This is another equation, which is a straight line because the power of x is one. So you could either plug some points or you could use your calculator. But the problem like that, since they give you all the pictures, um, if you actually find your x and y intercept like here, if you put zero for x in the equations, the equation was y equal 2.5x minus 4.96. If you put zero here, then what's the value of y? Minus 4.96. Or if you put zero for y, what's the value of x? You put zero for y here, so that means 2.5x minus 4.96 is equal to zero, or 2.5x is 4.96, or x is almost 1.98, or basically is almost two. The only graph that has this coordinates is this one, look. This intercept is two and wait a minute, I'm sorry, is, is the top one? Is this one. Minus 4.96 and x equal two is the top. Or you could use your graphing calculator and see which one is good. <clears throat> we discussed about equation of y equal x to power of three, which looks like that. So if you take that one and shift it down two units, this is what you have. Just this one. So originally it was y equal x cubed. Absolute value. What's the other graph of absolute value of x? Graph of absolute value of x, this is absolute value of x. Because if x is, if x is two, what's the value of y? Two. What if x is negative two? Y still is two, okay? So it's like this. What you have in the problem is absolute value of x, minus six, that means just shift, shift it down six units. And you, or you could just, if you want to know which picture is correct, you could just substitute the um, zero for y and find the x, x give you six and minus six. That's not what I'm going to do. Now, I put a page here that explain step functions or a step and piecewise functions. In this function, when you substitute a value for x, the value of y, if this x is whole number, then the value of y is that whole number. If it's not a whole number, it's a decimal, then you move to the left to find the whole number. For instance, here, x is negative one. It's a whole number, so y is negative one. That's fine. But here, x is minus 0.5. If x is not a whole number, like this, then you get a move to the left to find the very first whole number, which is negative one. That would be your y value, okay? So look, x is 110. x is here, 110. It's not a whole number. I need a whole number. So from this point, you move to the left. The very first whole number is zero. So y is zero. X is 1.5. 1.5 is not a whole number. So you need to move to the left to find the very first whole number, which is one. 1. 1.9 is not a whole number. You move to the left to find the very first whole number, which is one. That's how to find the y value. Domain is all real numbers and range is all set of all of You could put many numbers here. And this problem is, you know, problems is very similar to that. So for each of these, 
you find it. Okay, so let's go to the body of the full book. In this one, 1.1, 1 1.1 1 1 is not a whole number. So you move to the left, the very first one is marked. 1.9, 1 1.9 1 .9 is not a whole. Move to the left to find the very first whole number is one. 1.9, one. Minus 4.5, minus 4.5 here is not a whole number. You move to the left to find the very first one, negative five. Seven half, which is basically three half. Three point half is not a whole number. You move to the left to find the very first one is three. Okay. First, you take that eight and substitute for the X. Inside this bracket, you have, and of course they all have double, remember. You just have double for all this. Just a symbol. Okay. All right, so inside you have a whole number. So if you have a whole number, you pick that for the y, for the y value. Minus 1.56, I'll put that one inside. You end up having a decimal number. You move to the left, the very first one is three, see? You put here, 6.05, you move to the left, the very first one is six. 15.5, you move to the left, the very first one is 50. That's how you find the y value for this type of step functions. Here they show you how to graph this one. You know, if you put x equals zero here, it's a whole number, right? So what it comes out of this is zero, or minus zero is zero. Or if you put, <clears throat> Or if you put two here, it's the whole number, right? So it would be negative two. This two comes out and there is a negative. Now remember between zero and one, between zero and one, there is all these decimal numbers. Like what if I put 0 0.2 here or 0.9 here? When you put 0.9 for the X, because it's not a whole number, in order to come out of this, you have to move to the left. So very first number is zero. So it's come. So for all these numbers, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, all the way to 0.99, the y is always zero. That's why you get a straight line here. But it's not two, it's not one yet. It gets close to one, but it's not one. That's why it's an empty circle. A minute you substitute one, a minute you put one here, then the y is negative one. So you jump to the negative one when you put one. And then from 1, 1.1, 1.2, 1 1.3, all the way, 1.9, they all, when you move to the left, it's just 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And then since there is a negative outside, it's a negative 1. That's why we have a step functions. Okay? This is a type of graph that there are more than one equations. If you are substituting a number, Negative two and less, you have to use these equations. See, I show it to here. Like when x is negative two, you put it here, negative two plus six is four. When x is less than negative two, like when x is negative three, you put it here, negative three plus six is three, and so on. But if you want to substitute a number greater than minus two, right, like minus one, zero, stuff like that, then you have to use these equations. For numbers greater than negative two, like here, if you want to put negative two to the right, to pass any number between negative two and infinity, then you use these equations. So in that case, there are two pieces of graph, in you know, a two separate graph, and they're broken here. The reason we put filled, this circle is filled because it is equal to negative two, but the other one, it doesn't start from negative two. It's a little bit greater than that. That's why it's an empty circle. This is also three pieces. If you want to use x less than negative two, then you have this. When x is between zero and two, then use this equation. When x is greater than zero, use that equation. That's how you pick this graph. So three separate functions.
here, if you want to take a number for h, which is 30, use this equation. If the number is between 0 and 40, you always use this equation. So here it's 30. 30 is less than 40, right? So we, we, we use this equation. So 16 times 30 is that. When x, when uh, h is 55, if h is greater than 40, like here 55, then use these equations. All right, so that's how you do it. 